Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Anjan. I work for Red Hat. I work out of the Bangalore office. And uh, today I'm going to talk about code ready containers. So, my goal with the presentation is to uh, introduce code ready containers and uh, talk about how we build it and uh, finish up with a demo, simple demo. Okay, uh, so first of all, what, what, what is CRC? So, Code Ready Continuous is a like, local OpenShift cluster. So earlier we had MiniShift, but it only worked for OpenShift 3, version 3.x. Then OpenShift changed the architecture and moved to a operator-based self-managing cluster. So we needed to build this new tool to kind of do the same thing, have a local cluster on the developer's machine so that they can try and test out their code, how it would work in a cluster. So uh, there are like two parts of CRC. Uh, so you have a disk image, which is created from OpenShift install. But, but before that, why, why, why do we need CRC? So OpenShift install, which is the supported tool for OpenShift 4.0 installations, it only works for cloud environments and big clusters. And developers, they don't need it. They, they want something locally on their machines so that they can iteratively, iteratively try out their code. So the kind of advantage of code ready containers is you don't need public cloud. And OpenShift install, it only works. Uh, it has a libvirt support for locally uh, doing installation, but it needs uh, like three v it creates three VMs, which is kind of heavy, and it only works on Linux. And many developers who actually want to deploy their applications to OpenShift, they use a development machine, which is not necessarily on Linux. They use Mac mostly and Windows. So with code ready containers, we wanted to have a local OpenShift 4 cluster, which would work in Mac OS, Windows, with the same CLI, uh, same CLI options, some same, same commands, uh, like, like MiniShift. Um, uh, okay, so internally, uh, code ready containers creates a VM, which is uh, derived from OpenShift install. Which, is, uh, which has a minimum of 8 GB RAM, and we use the native hypervisor what the operating system provides, so that is, for Mac OS, we use HyperKit. For Linux, we use Livert, and for Windows, we use uh, Hyper-V. And uh, we use a lib machine, which is a Docker's, uh, which is like, like Docker machine's uh, internal library to manage the VM's lifecycle. So basically, code containers is nothing but uh, two, two, kind of, uh, two, two things. So there's, we have the disk image, which is like the VM image, which has OpenShift installed in it. And we have a tool, but like, as a user, you don't see that difference. You get one single CLI tool uh, to manage the whole cluster. And uh, we like, uh, put everything in the same binary so that you don't have to download multiple things uh, to just download one binary and you are ready, with, like, you are ready to deploy your code and test it locally. And uh, so now I'm going to talk about how we create the disk image, because that's really the main part of it. The, the CLI interface that you get to, uh, the, what it does is basically manages, manages that VM. Uh, so the disk image is generated uh, from OpenSafe install, and all the scripts that we use to generate that disk image is uh, available in that link, um, in, inside our code-ready namespace on GitHub. So, so like I told you, uh, there is the libvirt support from OpenShift installer, but it doesn't create a single node cluster. It, uh, it will create three VMs in your machine. So you need a really a beefy machine to actually try it out. But we wanted something that is a bit lightweight than that, so we create a single node cluster. So there's the master, where the API server is running of OpenShift, and all the wor workload is also scheduled onto that master. Uh, we use the OpenShift uh, install libvirt provider to actually create the cluster and uh, change the configuration so that it doesn't create a worker node and uh, the master is able to uh, run the workloads. So previously, OpenShift install used to taint the master, like they used to have a taint that it won't uh, allow workloads to be scheduled, but later on, I think, like in the last month, they removed that and now the work, we don't have to do any changes to the worker's configuration and it's able to run those uh, workloads inside. And uh, we also scale down several of the operators because in a development environment, you actually don't need monitoring. I mean, 
if, if you have a special use case that you want to consume that you can enable it by yourself, of course. But by default, we disable the monitor. We, do, we scale down the monitoring operator. We scale down the cluster version operator, which is used for upgrading the cluster. And, uh, so, and we also do some housekeeping to reduce the space. Like we delete the logs. We stop journal D from logging everything. And uh, we also like, uh, delete some of the pods that their work has, which, which works has been done. Uh, so what the snc.sh script, the, the shell script, what, what it does is it basically uses the OpenShift install with libvirt provider to create the cluster, then changes the, uh, sets the worker node to zero in, in the install config so that it doesn't create a, then we also create some PVs, percent volumes, so that later on you can create PVCs to uh, use, those, use those PVs in, PVs in your code. And we also expose the internal registry so that you can directly push your images to it. And in, the, in, in your cluster, you can use those images to deploy your app. Now, after snc.sh, the script is run. We, we have a VM, which is like a single node OpenShift cluster. Now, uh, we have to like, uh, ship it so that developers can actually use it. So for that, there is like, we run another script in our CI, which is create disk.sh. And uh, before that, we also do some other things so that like, the developer's work becomes easy later on. So we, we had a developer user with HT password entity. So the username is developer, the password is developer. And with that credentials, you can get into the cluster. Uh, we, oh, so to use OpenSwift install, you also need a pull secret to pull the images from Quay.io. And uh, while, building, while using OpenSwift install, it will ask you for the pull secret. Uh, at that time, we use our own pull secret to actually create the disk, but we cannot actually give it to everyone for using because it will be using our credentials to pull from the registry. So we just remove that pull secret. We remove the cluster ID. Uh, and during uh, CRC, when, like, when you get code-ready containers binary, during CRC start, those things you can pass it to as an argument. Then, yeah, so after snc.sh runs, we have a VM. And we do all those things. Then we extract that disk image from the CRC VM. We uh, we have that uh, QCow2 image, which is like the which has the OpenShift 4 in it. And then we convert that to a VHDX format for it being able to run in a Hyper-V hypervisor, which is the Microsoft default hypervisor. And uh, for Mac, HyperKit is able to run the QCow image. And uh, for running that image in HyperKit, we also need uh, some additional information, like the kernel command line and the path to the kernel. So, uh, and the, like there are many information that is needed for OpenShift install to actually create the cluster. So we, do, we club all those information in a nice little JSON file so that later on the CLI tool is able to pull it out and start the VM like as it's supposed to. And uh, we package them all together with a, in a tar archive. And we changed the extension to .crc bundle because initially people started extracting the disk image and they tried to like, send that disk image to CRC, but CRC was not expecting a disk image. It was expecting a bundle. So we just changed the extension to .crc bundle. So after we have the disk image, uh, we, we, have the, like, we have the OpenShift thing. Now we need something. So which can like start the OpenShift cluster, stop it, and like if you want, you can delete it. So we have the CRC CLI tool, which is the Go code, which actually manages manages those things. And we basically like wanted uh, to have like you know uh, a very uh, simple interface to it. So we basically you need to know basically two commands like CRC setup and CRC start to have your OpenShift cluster locally running. So what CRC setup does is it checks if your machine is able to run a VM and if it has all the networking configurations needed to actually route the DNS requests to the cluster. So on CRC setup, we check all those things, like if, if your machine is able to run VMs, if, if your network is configured to uh, route the request to the cluster and all those things. And if the setup, CSS setup command finds that every, anything is missing, it, it does the setup for you automatically. And uh, some of these operations are like 
privileged operations, like you cannot edit ETC resolver as a normal user. So it will, uh, CRC setup will ask you, will prompt you to enter your password. And just don't be afraid, give it to him, and it will change those files to actually set up your DNS. And how the DNS is set up is, we just uh, add a configuration in the host to forward the DNS requests that, that are supposed to go to the cluster to this DNS mask container running in the same VM. And that way we don't actually have to run many things on the host, we just reroute the request to the VM. And then CRC has, so after all of that, you have a cluster. Now you need to actually, uh, basically, uh, easy way to access the cluster. So we have additional commands called CRC OCN, which will configure your OC to talk to the CRC cluster. We have CRC console, which will launch the web console. If for reason, like, uh, if the console URL is something cryptic, you don't, don't have to remember it. You just do CRC console and the console opens up. So uh, to use the cluster, you can like use these tools, uh, the usual tools that, that are being developed. So audio would work, your OC would work, the web console already works, and there is also OpenCV VS code connector, which was shown in the previous uh, presentation. So all these all this supporting tools work, work with CRC, out of the box. Uh, okay, so. Uh, in the f so these are the things that we want to do in the near future. So there is no support for OKD still because OpenC4, the VM it creates is based on Red Hat Core OS, which, which, uh, which is like uh, you need actually some developer account to use it. But uh, it would be really nice to have OKD with the Fedora Core OS in CRC so that like, it can be used by anyone uh, which, who doesn't have a Red Hat developer account. So once that support lands in OpenShift install, we'll also have it in, in CRC. And Podman support, the, another thing. So on Mac and Windows, uh, if you want to move to Podman, you have to, uh, there's, there's one way, there's, it's, uh, there's a tool called uh, boot, boot to Podman. It also creates a Linux VM and your Podman client tool would talk to the da Podman daemon running in the VM. Since we already have a VM which has Podman support inside it, we just need to expose it so that in this, uh, the CRC, with CRC only, we can use Podman. So that's something being worked on. The another thing is, right now, since it's, a, it's kind of a full-blown OpenC4 cluster, it takes a lot of resources. Like, you need minimum of 8 GB RAM by default to run it. Whereas in Minishift, we could do it with 4 GB of RAM. So there's like a lot of effort going on minimizing the resource consumption. And then another thing is like, uh, so these CRC start, CRC stop, CRC delete, these things are very common. So if someone is working on an IDE like VS Code, they don't want to open up a terminal and do those things. So we wanted to have something that would sit on your system bar on Mac and like the start menu on Windows. From here, we can, with a few clicks, we can do those actions. So that is being also worked on, which is uh, I was working on recently. It's supposed to come in the next release of CRC. And, uh, and this uh, continuous upgrade, upgrade to the latest OCV version. So our release cycle is four weeks, so every four weeks we push out a new version which contains, uh, which, whose disk image is based on the latest OCP release that they push out. Um, okay, so these are the resources or the, the source code for code-ready containers, the SNC, like if you encounter any issues, you can go there, open a GitHub issue, or look at the code, raise the patch if you want something to be done. And you can download CRC from this, this link. I think slides will be available later. And on IRC, we are on hash code ready. Uh, you can talk to the de developers there. So uh, I'll now try to quickly show a demo of CRC. Like start the cluster, try to deploy a sample application. So uh, the okay. Let's do CRC setup first. So I already started the class because it takes some time. So I wanted to be ready. Uh, so everything is set up already, 
And now I just need to do CRC start. And yep, it is going to start OpenShift 4.2.13, which was the 1.4 release of CRC head. Yep, sure. Is that all right? And once once this finish, we should be able to access uh, the console, and I'll try to deploy a sample application just for completion's sake. Uh, one more important thing is like earlier with earlier releases of CRC, the cluster would used to the certificates in the cluster would used to expire after 30 days, but that issue has been fixed now. So if you want to like stick to an older version of OpenShift, you can do that now. Uh, the cluster will automatically regenerate the certificates and it will have a longer validity time. And, uh, a quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you download it from? Uh, it, it was there. So cloud.redhead.com, okay. you'll get a link there to download CRC. Yes, yes, that, that's, yeah, you need a Red Hat developer account. Because, uh, because it, uh, the builder images that a cluster needs is pulled from QA.io, which uh, you need access to that registry. So these credentials will be used to give you access to that registry. Yes, yes, we, we are using. So the next release is supposed to have 4.3, which is supposed to come tomorrow. And one more question. Uh, have you tried to use the CRC cluster, like, for example, for CI system, like container delivery and stuff like that, like build the cluster, mm -hmm. freezing up, or how, to, how did it shut it down and start up as a new machine for testing a container, uh, shutting down, start the next one? And yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I know some teams inside Red Hat, they're doing it with CRC. We don't test it, but there are teams who have success uh, doing that. Like, you can do that. Run it on a CI to test your application, de like delete it, then run it again on the next run. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, it's... Any, oh yeah. Ready to go. Yes, I do. <laughs> Just put in the airplane mode. Yeah. Sorry. So when when OKD comes live, will you still need the Reddit uh, Reddit over account to actually use the thing? Uh, mm, hopefully not. So how how do you then then pull any images like you want to base something on? Uh, so then you'll use, uh, so the Quay.io images, the builder images, it's also based on the Red Hat uh, rel. So those images will be based on CentOS or Fedora. So this will be available in a public registry. Okay, so we have the cluster. I will do CRC console. So you can check the status of the cluster with CRC status command. So it says running, so we should have the console. Okay, let's let's try with OC. 
So CRC OCN, this command would configure your OC to talk to the cluster. It's same as Minish if someone else has used it before. OK, cluster seems to be up. No, it's not that. It's it's a new cluster, so. No, uh, it did check that. So yeah, maybe when I changed the network, maybe the IP changed. I'm sorry, live demos don't usually work. So I I should have had a recorded version of it, but. But OC is talking to the cluster, so I think network configures are. Fine, I think just the web, okay, let me check. Pods in the OpenShift console namespace. Yep, console pod is running. Let's 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 try to deploy a sample application, sample Node.js application. So so you would use usually have your own code for this and use Odo or something else, deploy it. But yeah, thanks. Time is up. Okay. Uh, thanks, everyone.